Intel's A700K was certainly a hot chip when it launched, both physically and sort of metaphorically, and I haven't really had a chance to properly do a kind of overclocking guide for you. So in this video, thanks to ASUS and AWD IT who sent over a couple of bundles and who are sponsoring this video, I'm going to be able to take a look at a delidded 8700K and show you really how to get the most of your CPU. Now this is definitely going to be a more beginner's guide. If you already have experience with overclocking your CPUs, then feel free to kind of give this one a miss as you're likely not going to learn anything too new from it, although it will include some results and stuff like that for stuff like Cinebench and temperature results. So if you're interested in that, feel free to stick around. But otherwise, this is uh, kind of, as I said, just a, an introduction look into the main things that you can do to get a bit more out of your A700K, especially if it's a delidded one. So the setup that I'm using is an ASUS Maximus Hero 10. This one is a pretty nice, pretty high-end board and obviously, as I said, a delidded 8700K. I'm also using a Corsair H115i Pro, which is a 280mm all-in-one water cooler and does a really good job at cooling, well, CPUs. I also threw in an ASUS RX580 Strix to kind of complete the build. I'm using 3000MHz DDR4 Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM to go with this system. So now that everything is set up and installed, let's take a look at overclocking. So starting with the system off, we're obviously going to be, well, turning it on. You will be looking to press the delete key or if you've just set up the system, it might might come up with an error message saying new CPU or new memory installed, in which case you'll be looking to press F1, but we're looking to press delete here to enter the BIOS. Once we do that, it should automatically take us to the tweakers page where we can overclock the chip. Uh, extreme tweaking in this case, but depending on which motherboard you have will depend slightly on what it's called, but in this case it's ext extreme tweaking. That's the first page it takes us to, and we can see there's quite a lot of options here, so let's go through some of them. Now on the basic level, you can click on the overclocking pre presets menu and you can load the 5 gigahertz profile, you can load multiple other profiles that are available, so feel free to use that if you're uh, kind of newer to this process. Of course, if you fancy tweaking a little bit further, especially if you're using RAM that is XMP rated, uh, then you can switch to the AI overclocking tuner XMP mode, which will let you select your XMP profile, in this case it's 3000 megahertz with uh, 15, 17, 17, 35 timings, which is actually pretty decent for DDR. R4, and then we can go through the rest. Now the next option it gives you is to change your base clock frequency. This is a much more advanced overclocking technique and is something that I'll let the pros cover a little bit better than I can, so I'll leave it to them. But on the, the basic side, you can, if you fancy, change the base clock, which will change quite a lot about how uh, the CPU and the connected peripherals work. So just bear that in mind if you are planning on changing your base clock. Below that we have the ASUS Multicore Enhancements, which for the sake of this video I'm just going to be leaving as auto but you can disable if you fancy. You also have SVID behavior, which again, I'm just going to be leaving as auto, and the AVX instruction core ratio uh, negative offset value, which again, just, just gonna be leaving as the default three. When it comes to the per core ratio, I'm actually setting it to be per core here with a ratio of 50 for all cores. That means that you're gonna be timesing your base clock by this multiplier. So in this case, our base clock is 100 and our multiplier is 50 per core, which means that we're gonna get a total of 5,000 megahertz. A couple of options below the CPU multiplier uh, sort of options are the DRAM frequency options. Now this one is should be preset by our XMP settings, so you shouldn't have to worry about it, but just make sure that it is the same, uh, in our case, DDR4 3000 megahertz as your XMP profile. Now this ASUS Maximus 10 Hero board has a lot of options available for you, especially if you want to get in the real fine details of everything, all of the uh, clock speeds, all of the voltages, and basically anything that you fancy to do with the CPU, the RAM, and the uh, motherboard itself. So if you want to dive into those, feel free to do so, but in this video I'm just going to be covering the, the general basics of overclocking an 8700K, in this case a delidded 8700K, so let's stick with uh, just the basics here. Scrolling past the extreme tweakers section and a few other bits and pieces, you will find the core and cache voltage and the DRAM voltage. Both of these are two values that we definitely need to change. The DRAM voltage should have been changed by our XMP settings to likely 1.3 or 1.35 volts. In this case, it's 1.35, but the CPU is something that we definitely need to be uh, changing in terms of voltage here. So in this case, we're setting it to manual 
manual mode you can leave it in offset mode if you prefer and I know that plenty of people do but in this case for simplicity we're going to be leaving it in manual mode and setting the voltage to 1.3 volts. Now as I understand it it's not recommended to have your 8700k running at any more than about 1.4 volts as you risk damaging the CPU but you can obviously uh, change whatever you fancy and re really kind of fine tune exactly where the sweet spot is for your voltage versus your frequency. So with that said that is all the options we need for a standard 5 gigahertz overclock. I will be playing with this in a second just to see how high I can get this but I want to do a quick Cinebench run some Prime 95 stability testing and show you the temperatures that we're getting with this H15i Pro or H115i Pro and the delated 8700k. So we've booted into Windows and we have hardware monitor and Cinebench open. Now one of the nice things about having this delated chip is actually that these idle temperatures are really in the like 20 to 30 degrees Celsius range which is very impressive for what used to be a 40 plus uh, degree Celsius sort of ambient range so that's pretty awesome. The one thing uh, using Cinebench is uh, is a nice and uh, sort of starter tool to work out how well your CPU overclock is doing, how stable it is, and that sort of thing. You will likely want to use something like Ada64 or Prime95 to really get a proper idea for stability. But in this case, we're going to run a Cinebench uh, full core uh, all thread kind of test, see how it does, and then uh, obviously just make sure that our core speed stays at around about five gigahertz. It may fluctuate slightly, as you may see four nine nine six for example, uh, versus uh, 5002, but it's staying around about that mark and we also want to make sure that our temperatures don't get too high. In this case, we're looking at 55 to 59 degrees Celsius, which is excellent for a full load 8700K. So our Cinebench run has completed with a score of 1489. That's a little bit less than the 1567 I got a few minutes ago, but that's because I'm using OBS to record the screen and it's using the X264 encoder. So it's using a little bit of CPU utilization in the meantime. We can also take a look at Prime95 where we can see a little bit more of our actual stability with the uh, overclock. And if you really want to push an overclock, then something like Prime 85 is a really nice way to get a proper understanding of how stable, especially the long term use is. Now that I've got Prime 95 fired up, as you can see the temperatures are still pretty impressive. You're looking at the highest temperature here of being about 68-ish degrees Celsius, which is very impressive for a uh, well 100% load 8700K. At stock, without a, a delidding process happening to this chip, you're likely looking at this chip on this same testing with the exact same board, same uh, cooler, as something about 80 to 90 degrees Celsius. So that is a fantastic improvement and definitely worth uh, the kind of upgrade if you can uh, get your hands on a delidded CPU. So now we know that this works at 5 gigahertz, I'm going to push this to as far as it can go, see where the stability really lies with this chip and see how far we can push it before the temperatures get just a bit too high. So after a fair amount of head scratching and quite a lot of blue screens, I did manage to get around to getting a slightly higher clock speed. Now that it is only slightly higher, it is uh, 5.1 gigahertz versus the 5 that we had earlier, but that's just this chip in its own stability. The temperature wise, it's actually pretty impressive. Even at 5.1 uh, gigahertz, we're still maxing out in Cinebench about 60 degrees and Prime 95 are at about 70. So I'm really not that worried about temperatures for this chip especially with this cooler. Now when you're looking at trying to push a chip even further, there are plenty of more advanced options in the BIOS that you can look through uh, if you want to really push your chip and get the, the best possible uh, clock speed available to you. So feel free to take a look at them, feel free to experiment, and as long as you don't set any voltages significantly higher than they are at stock, you should be all right. So there you have it. That's the kind of beginner's guide to overclocking your 8700K and also a look into the difference between an 8700K that's been delidded and not, which is kind of crazy the uh, overall performance difference and the temperature difference that you can get from it so yeah definitely uh, worth doing if you can find a delayed chip but with that said thank you to AWD and ASUS for sponsoring this video and providing the bundles that you can actually pick up from their site so feel free to take a look at those if you're in the UK they sell pre delayed chips so feel free to take a look at that otherwise as I said thank you to those guys for sponsoring the video and thank you to you guys for watching it I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and informative if you did feel free to let me know in the comments down below and if you're already 
already an expert in overclocking, you, you've got some tips to share with the community, then feel free to leave those in the comments down below as well. And as, of course, if you actually have an 8700K, again, also let me know what your experience is with it too. There's going to be some other videos over here for you to check out. And if you're new to the channel, take a look at the subscribe button too for more videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. There's also great ways to support the channel by the Patreon link or the other affiliate links in the description down below. So feel free to take a look at those or otherwise that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.